Uh, we uh, called this to discuss the, uh, as you know, the bonding bill that's now uh, been released by the Senate and the House has had theirs. Uh, first of all, you know, priorities. We th think about priorities. And it comes, a short story comes to my mind. My son had some travel plans, road trip with his friends. He wanted to buy a new bed. But driving around in his old car, he realized that the front end was making a little bit too much noise. So he took it into the shop, $1,200 in repairs. He decided his priority was to make sure he could drive a car and get to work. And I would submit the state could learn something from that experience of his and from others. More priorities. And I'm coming down Hodgins and Rice Street to St. Paul here. Cars are weaving and dodging potholes. It's a priority. Priorities. Care 11 had a story about a gentleman who ran over a pothole and the airbag hit him in the face. Another story was about a, someone weaving, dodging potholes who was stopped by the police because they thought he was drunk or driving recklessly. Bonding is debt. It's borrowing. And it's got to be repaid. So we must be smart about how we use that money. Projects should be uh, should have a regional and statewide impact. It must positively impact the lives of a, every Minnesotan. Minnesota priorities, family priorities, are critical infrastructure items, roads, bridges, water systems, asset preservation. All of these, all of the extra things we have in the bonding bill that the Democrats put out, it's all nice stuff. But we got to talk about priorities, things that need to get done, and our priorities are roads, bridges, critical infrastructure items, and asset preservation. Thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, as uh, Senator Chamberlain said, uh, it is about priorities, and I would just add one item to this. We need to uh, make sure that our people can get in and around uh, the state, uh, provide them with an opportunity to get to a job. And speaking of jobs, I think one of the emphasis as a priority for our uh, points going forward is how do we fund work-ready skill sets, the institutions in terms of the places where people go to get an education so they can have a, a job that creates wealth for themselves which uh, by the way needs a road to get to and so as that uh, I would just encourage uh, those that are in uh, both chambers to consider the priorities as they would pertain to roads, bridges and the emphasis on where we need to go as a state. Thank you. Good morning. There's been a big focus on uh, whether or not Republicans have alternatives and bring ideas to the table that uh, will be beneficial to Minnesotans. And as you can see, this is an example of attempting to do that. And I have long maintained the point that uh, bonding, which of course is another word for borrowing, uh, is a legitimate tool to be used for government. And as you can see, we've got a lot of people up here in front of you, all of whom believe that there are legitimate uses for bonding. But the key is, we need to restrict the amount so that we don't burden generations ahead or after us with unnecessary debt. And then secondly, those projects should be prioritized that fulfill a need. And you've already heard people up here talking about that. We need to take care of our roads and bridges. And the flip side of that is we shouldn't fund those things that don't truly benefit all Minnesotans or have regional significance. So this is a bill about not only the uh, amount of the bonding bill, but more importantly, actually, the priorities that are important to Minnesotans. This process can be about leadership or it can be about politics. What are the what are the priorities of Minnesota? We've heard a lot about the need for more road and bridge funding uh, throughout the state of Minnesota. We have a golden opportunity in front of us. So is this bonding bill going to be about fixing roads and bridges or is it going to be about cherries on a spoon and snowmaking equipment? Or will it be about restoring the state capital? Um, or rather, would it be about uh, building theaters in Minnesota's largest cities? Will it be about repairing the current set of state government buildings properly or building civic centers in three, three cities so that they can compete with each other? Mm -hmm. Will it be about bringing water to communities where the water supply dried up? Or will we build art centers and zoo exhibits? We have an opportunity here to lead and do uh, what is best on behalf of Minnesota people to do what they have been asking for. And I hope that uh, we can actually uh, see that uh, happen uh, as, we, as we 
uh, go forward here and that we can see a signal from the governor and a signal from Democrat leadership that they're actually willing, like we Republicans are, to listen to the priorities of Minnesotans. Thanks. Open up for questions. Do you guys support the idea of using a cash portion? Well, I think uh, the agreement that was made between the leaders last year included a cap at $1 billion in uh, geo bonding. And uh, what we're trying to do is to say that we could probably look at that with $850 million left over and what could we do to fund the priorities of the state of Minnesota within that budget. And we said that we could do that with asset preservation, uh, roads and bridges and infrastructure, and we could still have over $200 million in projects that the leaders could talk about and negotiate with and move forward and still be under that $850 million cap. As Republicans, our votes are not required for passing a cash bill. Uh, so we want to make sure that we can fund the priorities of the state of Minnesota within what we consider to be uh, adequate bonding uh, capacity of a billion dollars for the biennium. That's been kind of a, a watermark around here, and it's been one of the few things that has been uh, fiscal breaks around here is a billion dollar bonding bill. And uh, I think that that was wise to try to uh, limit ourselves to that last year when the, the leaders agreed to that. Uh, but our emphasis would be on the general obligation portion of this, which requires a supermajority. And that's why we've chose to focus on that and to try to fund the priorities of the state of Minnesota, particularly infrastructure, roads, and bridges within that 850. Representative Dean, if, if they include the cash, are you folks not going to put up the votes for the 8? 45 or 855 or whatever it turns out to be to force them not to put that cash on The Republicans have no ability to control the votes of the Democrats for a simple majority uh, The one thing that we do have uh, is we that, have the I'm ability saying. to do this and that's what we're looking at We're looking at a bill that we can fund within the 850 Okay, but I'm, I'm saying if they insist on the cash and I understand that you don't have the, the, the that they only need a simple majority for the cash portion of it if they insist on the cash, are you not going to put up the votes for 845 till they drop that thing down to this whole thing is under the billion dollar limit that you're looking at? Sure. That's the question. Well, the exact uh, the reason that we are so focused on that is we want to make sure that we fund the priorities within that 850, uh, like the Lewis and Clark pipeline. We think that that is a very critical need for Western Minnesota. That is. Uh, towns that are literally bone dry. We think getting fresh drinking water to them is something that we should be doing. Uh, Lake Elmo also has water needs that we're uh, focusing on and we need uh, to move forward within this bill this year. Uh, so we're going to be focusing on those critical needs within this bill. And that's why it's important for us not to negotiate with uh, many different bills over which we have no control, but to focus in on the one thing that I think uh, Minnesotans are saying, why can't you fund your priorities within this? I think what we heard last week from the Democrats was that if you really want to do things like extend water to the parched areas of the state of Minnesota or if you want to uh, really fund critical road needs that you're going to have to break an agreement. Uh, you're going to have to go over your budget. And what this really says is shouldn't we be able to start with those critical needs first? Let's fund Lewis and Clark first. Let's fund our roads first. Let's on the bridges first and then with the money that's left over here you can see over 217 million dollars we can talk about nice projects and things that uh, are probably uh, things that we could would be nice to have and perhaps we could fit within the budget oh, of this bill are, are you including the full amount the 70 million dollars in your bill and if you are or in your proposal if you are are you what are you taking out that's in the Senate bill uh, the $69 million would be fully included within this uh, so proposal. Will Lewis and Clark, will you tell us again why you think that's more important than some of the other items in the bill? Well, I think that when you talk about uh, critical infrastructure needs in the state of Minnesota that uh, we should be funding. Uh, that is certainly one. And also another important agreement, that's, that's important to the governor, as you saw in State of the State Address. That's important to the Democrats, as you've seen in, in introduce, introducing their bills. And it's important to us. So where you have areas of common ground, uh, that's a good place to begin with a nice big rock to put in first so as is, in Rock you, County. <laughs> as is, are you no votes on your chamber's bills right now? We are, uh, are the leaders are talking with each other right now. Uh, the Senate came out with their proposal this morning. I think that that moved in the right direction. 
Uh, but uh, we have not seen the uh, Democrat House version or the governor's position on that yet. Uh, we cl clearly have different priorities uh, that we are uh, expressing here today. And, and, and our main message is that we can fund the priorities of the state of Minnesota within this budget, and we should stick to our guns and, and keep trying to do so. So you're not committing yes or no on your votes at this point? Uh, there, uh, there's been no commitment from us from the leadership on, on votes for a bonding bill How at this point. How move in the right direction compared with what has been on the table already? Well, I think uh, that the capital is fully included within that uh, piece. Uh, and the agreement of 846 or 850 uh, we see reflected within that agreement. So that's a step forward from the House's position to the one that Senator Stumpf came forward with this morning. Obviously, that just came out, and we're just starting to sort of look at the details of that proposal so right now. Are you okay now. with the capital being paid for in cash as, as it was in the Senate proposal? Well, the, uh, I, the, 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 the office, the office building the senate office building is also we've now passed that uh the um regretfully i think uh, i believe that that's something that should have required the two-thirds majority that we are talking about right now um and the office building component of that and how that ties in with the capital are things that we need to negotiate why do you have it up the senate office building on this poster here it's not part of the bonding bill it's a uh, don't you think it's misleading to have it up there when it's not even part of what we're talking about here? Well, I think if you ask the, the citizens of the state of Minnesota, what, what are you building this year, uh, that was decided to get built first. Uh, it was decided to be pulled out of the bonding bill process very deliberately. Um, and we finished that priority first, but not Lewis and Clark. Uh, so that that was a very deliberate choice. So I think the, the citizens of the state of Minnesota don't worry about is this geo or is this cash or is this appropriation bonds. They say, what did you decide to build first? Did you decide to fix the roads or did you decide to build a Senate office building? So I think that in the minds of the voters that I represent in my district, uh, that's a very, very legitimate uh, comparison to make. Well, well Representative Dean, I, I, want, I want to follow up on that because this isn't done until we go signy die. And you still got some political power in this thing. If you really want to fix the Senate office building problem, couldn't you say to Democrats, look, we're not going to go ahead and give you the votes you need on this bonding bill unless you decrement the additional cash that they're putting on to subtract that building out of it or back off on the project? I mean, if you really wanted to solve the problem, would, couldn't you do that politically? Don't you have the power to do that? Well, I think you're negotiating a bonding bill, and you're well, doing a good I'm job of it, and we might bring you in for what that. The citizens so. <laughs> might think. Seriously, I'm just asking what the citizens might think as to whether Republicans are really serious about getting this Senate office building, this boondoggle you're saying across the street, off the table because you still got the power to do it. And are you debating me that, you'd have the, that you don't have the power to do that still? Well, we've, uh, we've fought it every step of the way and continue to do so. Well, why not continue to fight it by saying, hey, that we're not going to go along with this bonding bill if you put the cash on there unless you subtract the Senate office building off now? We, we have uh, fought against it, and, and we are continuing to do so. And uh, there's also a legal challenge with that building that is ongoing. Representative Drzyzkowski right. spoke about the, the civic centers earlier. And I know a lot of your members have had concerns with the various uh, civic center projects in St. Cloud, Rochester, Mankato. How big of a sticking point is that for your members in terms of supporting a bonding bill? I mean, is that, is that something that's going to cause your members to have pause in voting for a bonding bill if it has 60 some million dollars for convention centers? I think it varies, Mark, depending on the members. Of course, you've got members in each of those communities, and that's uh, part of this process, which uh, I think is inherently flawed that uh, that begins to leverage this piece uh, for you and your vote, this piece for you and your vote. We know how this works, and that's why I called for leadership from the governor to bring about a process that actually focus focuses on what Minnesotans are asking for. Are you saying you want some of these projects out that you're pinpointing? Do you want skiing out, sculptures out? Is that part of the message here? Well, I think, I think Representative Dean pointed out real well, uh, we really want the Senate office building out. Um, I think uh, what you're seeing here is examples of projects, um, the ski chalet, the sculpture wants. garden, that are wants and not needs and that Minnesotans not, are not asking for this. They're not, they're not asking that these be addressed. Uh, these are uh, relative to these. Um, this is night. Th those are night and this is day. Are you asking for those to be out, though? Oh, uh, 
Yes, uh, I, I am, and uh, I would expect most of our members are, Mary. Are they on board with this plan? Sure, uh, we've uh, uh, discussed this with uh, leadership, and this really reflects the, the leadership's priorities about infrastructure, uh, roads and bridges, and asset preservation uh, that we have been talking about all session long and uh, also leaves room for negotiation, which obviously, in order to pass a bonding bill through either chamber, uh, much less a supermajority, you need some negotiating room, obviously uh, almost a quarter billion dollars uh, in projects to be, uh, to be negotiated. Uh, so what we're really saying to the, the, the state of Minnesota is that uh, we should be able to fix our potholes, keep our crumbling infrastructure uh, put back together and really make an investment, particularly in a unsession year, uh, if we're really serious about that, let's really make some uh, serious commitments to those areas first. And that's really uh, what the exercise is and what the bill is uh, going to be. So with that, I, I thank you guys and thank you for your time. And uh, we'll be uh, probably addressing this uh, very shortly down the road. Thanks, guys.